Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo of one event driven auto scaling on Kubernetes. This video is the second use case how to build your event driven application for auto scaling on Kubernetes with Kata with a Kafka cluster. Let's get started. First of all, if you didn't watch it, the first use case, I'm encouraging you people to find the first use case how to build your event driven application for auto scaling on Kubernetes with HPA with the Kafka cluster. And you can understand the background, why we think about auto scaling and how Kubernetes auto scaling architecture looks like. So this is the second video once again. So we're going to have multiple microservices with multiple language platforms such as Quarkus, Spring Boot, Node.js, and Python, etc. Let's say this application have own HPA for auto scaling capability on Kubernetes. But what if you could have external services, for example, AWS CloudWatch and Apache Server and Prometheus and also Azure Monitor. So in this external services actually impact your existing microservice application running on Kubernetes as a deployment resource. And then it's sometimes it really hard to auto scale at the right time uh, based on event driven messaging rather than HPA uh, based on CPU memory utilization. In order to solve that problem, you might think of you have own auto scaling infrastructure such as Kubernetes custom matrix. Uh, you can have AWS CloudWatch metric adapter or Prometheus metric adapter to consume Kafka cluster messaging. And also you can have Azure Monitor metric adapter. The problem is individual application relies on different metrics from, for example, inventory application consume metrics from AWS CloudWatch. Auto application should consume metrics from Kafka cluster. So you cannot be sure every single application should consume the one metrics from external services. That's the reason why Kata was born and designed to solve this kind of problem. So what is Kata? So Kata is the open source project and also name is the Kubernetes event-driven auto scaling. It's pretty super simple. It invented by Red Hat and Microsoft and a couple of years ago, and then this project was donated to CNCF. And now this project is part of the incubation project in CNCF. So Kata recently released 2.6, which is a tons of a lot of great feature. You can go to kata.sh address. You can find more detail on uh, how Kata works and what kind of feature you can actually use for your Kubernetes event-driven auto scaling. So I'm going to quick summarize and what kind of features Kata enable you have to auto scale your application for based on event driven metrics. Kata fundamentally auto scale standard Kubernetes resources such as deployment and stable and job, etc. Kata also provides more than around 50 built in scaler, for example, Apache, Prometheus, RabbitMQ, and AWS services, Azure services, and so on. That scalability based on event-driven application metrics rather than CPU and memory utilization, just like you saw in the first use case demo video. The more important thing is data does not manipulate the data itself. For example, you might be interested in cloud event message format, which is a standard way to define your Cloud event messaging, and you can actually consume that message in any platform such as uh, Java, .NET, or even uh, binary, something like that. In the traditional environment, you can define different format of your messaging, for example, JSON, or binary, or both above. In the client perspective, you need to parse different types of a format of a messaging. So in order to solve that problem, the cloud event, which is really Great standard way to provide the standard messaging format for event driven application. The one problem for developer, they need to rewrite the application process and consume that cloud event messaging format compared to existing messaging generation format such as JSON or binary thing. But Kata actually try not to manipulate the data itself, such as a cloud event. You can install Kata using operator or ham chart. So with Kata, you can redesign your auto scale infrastructure, such as this diagram. You don't need to define HPA object any longer. 
Instead, you can just create a scale object resources based on Keta. Keta pulling metrics from external services, for example, AWS and Apache Kafka or Prometheus and so on. And then the Keta scale controller pulling that metrics and try to scale from zero to one your individual deployment applications. Behind the scene, Keta actually trigger HP as well. In the end, the application will be scaled out to from zero to hundred or maybe thousand application based on external event driven metric. Keta built in the Kubernetes and you can define scale object or scale job for the batch process. And then based on that objects, uh, Keta will scale your standard uh, resources in the scale zero to one and one to zero. And then with the HTTP triggering, it actually scales to a number of the applications. And here's a quick example how to define scale object. You can specify scale to reference object, for example, deployment name. And then uh, you can actually specify trigger, which is source you're going to pull in the metrics, like event metrics. For example, this is a Kafka source. What I want to showcase today for this demo, I'm going to redesign the existing Kubernetes auto scale architecture from HPA to Keta. In the right side, the redesign architecture from now on, Keta is enable script metric from Kafka copy. In the end, Keta will scale from zero to one your uh, orchestra application, for example. In the end, you got a, a lot of event message from Kafka, in the end, the application can scale to like a 10 application. Let's get into the demo how it works. First of all, this is, I'm gonna use the same application uh, that I used in the first use case demo. Now here, just a quick summarize, you can have the focus application with a simple event consumer Java classes, which he, you're gonna use the incoming annotation that allows Java developer to consume the Kafka server, uh, which is the, my topic with the Kafka topic. It's pretty simple when you create a reactive application with the Kafka integration. And then just uh, print out the, uh, the event, the dummy event. Here is the application property file in the purpose, how to define your Kafka configuration with the key and values. So here's the Kafka topic name, my topic. And then here's the bootstrap server, which is the exec service name on the I already deployed in my OpenShift cluster. And also you can see OpenShift configuration, how to deploy application uh, into Kubernetes, which is OpenShift directly. This is exactly the same configuration I used, I used in the first use case demo. Here is a YAML file, how to deploy the Quarkus application. I actually push this image into a query uh, container registry. I'm not going to try to use Quarkus OpenShift extension at this moment uh, because the data will tell a deployment object to scale your application. Here is the deployment name, Quarkus-EDA-demo, and here is the environment variable. We're going to consume the application from Kafka Bluetooth Web Server. All right, looks good. I just copy this YAML file and then paste it in the import YAML editor, my OpenShift cluster, based on the developer perspectives. Okay, as you can see, I already installed Apka cluster using AMQ3 operator, which is really awesome for developer. You can stand up in a minute uh, to install Jukeeper in an Apka cluster with a replication. So when you go to administrator, uh, you can actually find installed operator and you can also install operator based on Keta. In the here to Keta operator, I already installed, that's why you can see install the marked. Once you install Keta operator, you have to create a Keta controller. I already did it in my cluster. Okay, so I'm gonna import the YAML file to deploy Quarkus application. And then go back to topology view. The application will be started in a minute. And I can add a label uh, to make this application as a representative on Quarkus. And then when you go to Quarks Runtime Bureau, so you can see this application running on based on OpenJVK JVM, and then it's also enabled my Topi Kafka and the based on 281 this application. And now I'm gonna create a new Keta scaler, like a based on scale object. This is the EGM YAML file. And then you have to make sure 
the same name of deployment of your Quarkus application, like a scale target reference name, and then trigger from the Kafka source. With this scaler, so Kata will uh, aggregate all metrics like from Kafka server based on this server name, and then will trigger or scale your deploy target deployment, which is a Quarkus application. Okay, I just copy and paste in info YAML editor and then go back to my topology view and you can see all the scaling, all the HP, all the scaling automatically create that and then the Quarks application automatically scale down to zero because there's no metrics from Kafka topic at this moment. So once we uh, edit a new uh, Kafka performance test plot in here and it automatically detected by Kata, in the end, the Kata will auto scale our Quarks application. So let's uh, try to uh, make that happen. So in the meantime, uh, when you go to HPA, there is no current realization. Okay, so I'm gonna copy the same job here, in uh, which I'm gonna use Kafka performance test, which is already existing in the Kafka server. And then uh, this job will generate five million dummy messages uh, into Kafka, and then Quarkus application will consume that message uh, and uh, try to process, which uh, will be detected by uh, Kata as well. So when you go to uh, Quarkus application, it will uh, scale up in a minute through Kata scalar controller. Okay, now you can see uh, it's auto scale to one. And then when you go to uh, Quarkus runtime view logs, you can find the event message keep consuming from Kafka topic. So try to take a look at that and uh, Change the view logs, you can find maybe there are already a lot of event messaging uh, are coming from the Kafka topic. In the meantime, the Quarkus application already scaled to the four based on data controller and it will keep scaling based on a matrix from Kafka topic. In the end, the maximum is 10 at this moment. And then in the meantime, uh, our Kafka performance approach job is completed and then it once Quarkus application consume and process all messaging, and then it will scale down to zero automatically based on Kata scale controller. As you can see, it's almost done. In the end, your application scale down to zero, just like you can see here. All right, this is how to design and optimize your auto scaling capability on Kubernetes with the event-driven application with Kata and Kafka. I'm going to spoil the next use case and video. I'm going to showcase how to build serverless event-driven application for auto-scaling on Kubernetes. Hope you see next video. Thanks for watching.